Our next one here, Rashad White coming off just a horrific week, guys. There's no way around it. One of the more inefficient weeks we've seen from a running back in quite some time. The good news for Rashad White is that the Bucks play the Bears, and Jordan Love had a pretty easy uh, week one against that Chicago defense, and a lot of teams did last year. So, you know, when you look at this one, Lawrence, a horrible start for Rashad White, but it feels like the Bucks aren't just going to move on to Sean Tucker right away. Do you ride this one out a little bit longer? Yeah, I'm going to keep this open. I got him at running back 19 this week. Like you just mentioned what the Packers did against the Bears. Uh, we saw what Aaron Jones did. Uh, against the Bears and he Rashad White may not perform to that tune but they're sticking with it you it, and running backs have days like these sometimes Josh Jacobs only had 48 yards on 19 carries so they're keep chugging along he had 19 touches in uh week one you got five carries from Sean Tucker that's what a backup running back does you had Chase Evans with two carries that's what a backup backup running back does so I'm going to keep it open for Rashad White and see what he do versus a defense that definitely gives it up. I'm with you, Lawrence. I'm keeping it open as well. Bears allowed 185 yards from scrimmage and two total touchdowns to Packer running backs. Obviously, a lot of that was Aaron Jones. And so, you mentioned it. Like, again, fantasy success comes from talent and opportunity. Jury's still out if Rashad White has talent. Like, he was really inefficient last week. Yeah. But he definitely has opportunity. It's not a matchup that scares you as well. So, uh, I'm keeping it open. He's my running back 15 this week. So, I'm as a solid mid-tier RB2 this week. Is it Sean Tucker, though, the guy that could be in the wings loading? Right now, undrafted so. free agent, who we've talked about a lot, but has a lot of talent. Has a lot of talent. You talked about it. Probably should have been a third-round pick. For sure. Uh, if it wasn't for the, the, concern, the medical concerns. But those have all been cleared up. He was great at Syracuse. Syracuse was better than they had any reason to be uh, this past year in football, and a lot of it was Sean Tucker. Why they didn't run, run Sean Tucker in the second half against Clemson drives me crazy. They should have <laughs> yeah. won that game. Don't get me started. Um, but, uh, yeah, Sean Tucker's a very talented running back, and as somebody that has some shares of Rashad White, I have Sean Tucker in every league that I have Rashad White, and I also have some Sean Tucker in deeper leagues where I'm just – chasing some backup running backs with upside because there's a path to Tucker being a viable fantasy starter, but not this week. I think Rashad White holds him off and has a nice game against the Bears. Sticking with the running backs, Jamal Williams, the volume was there for him in week one against the Titans, but the production was not. He had 18 carries for 45 yards, only caught two passes for seven yards. Lawrence, he sees the Panthers this week, so we know how good that Titans front is and you know, kind of TBD as the Panthers have been rebuilding this defense. Yep. No Alvin Kamara still. Kendra Miller's been banged up. Jamal Williams is really the guy there, but does that matter with how little we got from him in week one? It does. It does. Uh, I'm, I'm keeping this open, but a little more reluctant to do that. You feel great about this, Tab? Yeah, I got him at running back 33 to Matthews 29, which that's a, that's a nice little flex play right there. You mentioned it. This week they got the Carolina Panthers. Uh, Tyler Algier has 75 on the ground against them. Bijan Robinson, 10 for 56 against them. So they may be able to, obviously Jamal Williams is not explosive as neither one of those guys, but he'll be able to do, he'll be, he'll have a little more running room this week. And we all know that his value comes with scoring the touchdowns near the goal line. So the Saints should be able to get to that point in this game. So I'm going to keep it open for this, for, for one more week at least. Sure, how are you uh, feeling about this? Yeah, I, I, I feel the same way. Look, running against Tennessee isn't like running against a lot of other teams. You know, it's interesting. <laughs> so my friend Dwayne McFarland brought up this point I, uh, on, uh, on his Fantasy Life podcast, which I thought was really smart. He says, I wonder if the reason the Tennessee Titans have been so good against running backs all these years is because they practice against Derrick Henry. That defense has to play against Derrick Henry. Every, and so they get out on the field on Sunday. They're like, That's you nothing. ain't Derrick Henry. Yeah. This is easy. Yeah. Like, you go learn the date. Yeah. Right, exactly. We can like, actually tackle oh, Jamal team. Williams. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm looking forward to Jamal Williams. Yeah, like, like, you, I a just, ra you a rag right, dog. I, exactly. I just spent the last three days getting dragged around by Derrick Henry. Right. Like, they, they, I'm already, good. they already bumped and bruised. Coming right, exactly. into the oh, yeah. this? That's oh, right. Sh yeah, like, <laughs> it, it reminds me of my kid Connor. So, um, you know, Mike, uh, he's 18 now. He's a freshman at Alabama. But uh, when he was when he was like six, his older brothers were 10 and 12. And that's a big difference, right? Yeah. And so he – but they would just beat him up because it's three boys, right? And they just constantly energy. And so when he finally got on the football field, he's like, whoa. Well, I, this is a guy age. my, my yeah, size? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, and he There's led nothing. his team in tackles every single year because it was – for him it was just like – 
this is nothing. I'm used right. to I'm used to having to defend myself against ten and twelve year olds, right. and so exactly. yeah. um, you know, and uh, you know, and his <laughs> his football team, you know, finished fourth in the state, and so anyway, same sort of thing here. I'm keeping it open on now. The video guys are like, how am I supposed to make a video of that? All right, I got you, video guys. Here you go. Um, clean break here, and I'll just say I am keeping it open on Jamal Williams. Look, 77% of the team snaps in week one. He was one of only 10 running backs in the NFL to have 20 touches in week one. Obviously, didn't go very far, but again, that was against Tennessee, as we've talked about. Really hard to move the ball against Tennessee. It's a different situation against Carolina, as Lawrence just mentioned. Algier and Robinson both had huge games against him. Maybe Kendra Miller comes back this week. We'll see. But my expectation here is that He's not really involved in the passing game. There'll still be some Taysom Hill that'll be annoying. Yeah. And and they they seem like, at least in week one, they want to be more passive than we thought with both, with, you know, Alave, a currently healthy Michael Thomas, yeah, yeah. and Rashid Shahid. So uh, Williams isn't getting as much passing work, but I'm at running back 29. I was a top 30 play. I think he's a flex play with upside this week against the Carolina Panthers. Lawrence, how does this one start to change when Alvin Kamara comes back and Kendra Miller really starts practicing in full again and this turns into a one-man show all of a sudden into a three-man show? It's definitely going to change for Jamal Williams in between the 20s. It'll definitely change for him there, especially when Kamara comes back. Uh, we, I don't think we know if Kendra Miller will come back this week, but it could be as Stevie early Day. as this week. But they, they won't cut, like, Kendra Miller's not getting 15 touches coming off an injury as a rookie. So that's part of the, another reason why we keep it open. Yeah, and by the way, also, think about Alvin Kamara for a second. Like, we don't know if Alvin Kamara's any good anymore. Right. Like, it's been a while since we've seen that dude. And he has, even, even at Alvin Kamara's peak, which I think we can all agree isn't currently uh, happening, but even at his peak, there was still like Mark Ingram, like they still used multiple running backs. He's yeah, never been, thing. he's never been a Derrick Henry type in the sense of like getting like a massive workload. Yeah. It's always been, it's always been screen passes. It's always to try to get him in space. It's like you know. Yeah. So Jamal Williams and or Kendra Miller maybe later in the season if Jamal doesn't pick it up here, but like uh, there's still going to be a role for a second running back even if Kamara is better than what we've seen the last 100%. couple of years. So, and by the way, we don't know. Like, supposedly. They're still running Tony Jones. Yeah, thank you. Exactly. That's it's like, who they were. Yeah. Right. I mean, just like Kamara's been hurt the last couple of years and supposedly he's fully healthy and, you know, probably a chip on his shoulder, wants to prove himself after, after the suspension. But we don't know, like, until he gets out there. So, I, I just, I don't want to put too many. It's week one, but especially against Tennessee, I just don't want to put too much yeah. um, on, the, uh, on the run game here. Let's see how it plays out against Carolina. Our last a lot better idea next week our last tab on file here guys Dalton Schultz who Ooh. not a big week one CJ Stroud makes Ooh. his debut against the Ravens Schultz targeted four times uh, for two catches and four yards it's not that the pass catchers didn't do anything in this game Stroud was asked to throw and, and threw pretty efficiently for a rookie yeah. overall but for Schultz not a great game and then now he will get the Colts in week two so Barry where does Schultz stack up for you is everybody's kind of looking for maybe a tight end to stream with all the injuries this group yeah, has Yeah, I mean, he's a tight end 18 for me this week. Fourth lowest air yards per target among qualified tight ends. He was one of only four tight ends with an 80% snap share, so that was good. He was at least out there, but a less than 10% target share. Dallas Goddard, Cade Otten, Tyler Higby, the other three. Uh, I think I might prefer all of them. Otten is, you know, a borderline there, but, like, there's too many There's too many guys like like Luke Musgrave, like, like Hunter Henry, like um, Sam Hayden Laporta. Hurst. Hayden Hurst, who had a nice game for Carolina. Like, I, I don't know. It's just, it's a low volume offense. Uh, Stroud struggled to me. He's and by down. the way, by the way, there's other options in that passing game. That's the weird part, Rick, is that just like Bobby it's Trees got, Bobby Trees, like, and not that I want any part of Robert Woods, but the fact of the matter is, is that Bobby Trees got like, I think, seven targets off the top of my head, right? And so, yeah. right. And Nico Collins, who I do like a lot, he looked good. My guy Tank Dell, you guys know I'm obsessed with Tank Dell. Tank Dell got four targets in his first, like all those guys, Robert Woods isn't more explosive, but like those guys are commanding more targets in this offense from a rookie quarterback. I just, it's hard for me to see Dalton Schultz being a big part of a passing offense against, uh, against the Colts. And so you're really going to need a touchdown to pay off. And if you're basically looking for a touchdown dependent tight end, there's just better bets there. Hunter Henry being one of them. Musgrave, oh, yeah. Laporta, like, uh, you know, any one of these guys. I, I, Zach Ertz, like, Zach Ertz got double digit targets. Like, I'd prefer him. Like, anyway, so, um, or how about Adam Trotman? We didn't get to this, early, but Greg Dolchitz is going to miss yeah. multiple weeks now. 
How about Adam Trotman, who was already playing more snaps than Dulcich to begin with? He's got a tough matchup against uh, Washington this weekend, but uh, like Trotman is somebody I would prefer to Dalton Schultz. I prefer Logan Thomas. By the way, Logan Thomas came yeah, back. Boy. Right? Lo <laughs> I know. You know, guys, I, I love Logan Thomas, but like a, a tight end is part of what the enemy likes to do on offense, and Logan Thomas had seven targets on Sunday. Speaking of, uh, I'm going to keep it close. Speaking of other tight ends who had seven targets, Durham Smythe, the, the Dolphins, Dolphins tight yeah. end, and you want that tight end and that offense, they don't even have to run the ball to be successful. Cole Komet, seven targets. Hayden Hurst, you mentioned him, seven targets and a touchdown. Kyle Granson from the Colts, he had six targets for them. So, and the Texans are playing the Colts defense who they had the Jaguars number. Like, they played them tough. That defense is improved. And the Texans is just like, they still figuring it out. And Dalton Schultz tied in targets on his team with way too many people for me to want to put him out there in my line this week. And yeah. I think right now when you look at the Texans offense, outside of Damian Pierce, honestly, Barry, who could you start? Because to be fair to Stroud, they're missing three players on the offensive line. Hey, it's Matthew Barry from NBC Sports and Rotoworld.com. Just want to thank you so much for watching what you just watched, or at least being too lazy to click out of it after the you know autoplay just kept it going. So either way, thank you so much for just letting it scroll by your screen. And now I'd like to ask you respectfully, 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 okay, respectfully, please subscribe to the NFL on NBC YouTube channel for the latest NFL news, fantasy headlines from Roto World, and betting analysis from NBC Sports Edge.